What do you think about this wind? This is uh, going to make working in the winter difficult if we were staying in the water. Uh, it's been blowing like this off and on pretty much every week and it makes working in the boat really difficult. But that's not a problem anymore because we are moving out of the boat for probably the last time. We've got a bunch of tools left in the boat and a couple of bits and pieces left, but today they're all coming out because um, we're finally hauling the boat out of the water. All right, let's talk about why we're hauling out. Why are we hauling out? Well, uh, <laughs> this project's been going on for quite a while now. Um, and as you can see, the boat is completely gutted. It's, uh, it's been, I don't know, difficult to work on the boat as much as we thought we were gonna be able to. Uh, we just have so much else going on this year that um, the amount of time we thought we were gonna be able to work on the boat is just getting smaller and smaller. And this project's getting longer and longer and bigger and bigger. Um, right now we're at the phase where we need to do a ton of glass work, uh, basically reinforcing the entire hull, replacing all of the bulkheads, and reinforcing the keel structure some more. And we were planning to hire some people to help us do that, but it's been kind of difficult to find people willing to do the work. In Italy. In Italy. It's hard to find. Um, but the main reason we're hauling out is because there's still one huge question mark in this whole project and we're gonna finally get the answer to that, which is? The keel. Ever since we started the renovations with the boat, ever since we started sailing. Ever since we got the boat we, and the keel wobbled the very first time. Yeah, we've, we were always curious about the keel. We were always concerned about the, of the condition of the keel, right? We were assured that, you know, Pearsons are built like tanks and everything is great and the keel is not an issue until we started sailing on our boat and then we realized that not not so take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, these boats are definitely like classic uh, day sailors and coastal cruisers, but Yeah, and we've we've talked about that a bunch in the videos, but the the, the main thing, the reason why we want to attack the keel now is because even if we do this entire renovation it would still be a question mark. We would yeah. still, it would still be in one uncertainty that we don't know the condition of the keel and because we can't really see the bolts in there and we can't really see the true condition unless we bring it out, um, we would never know. So it would be pointless to do all of this beautiful work and then the keel falls off after. <laughs> the keel falls off, would yeah. suck. So I think it is something that we need to address and while we're here, it's, it's kind of a pain to work on the boat in these conditions because like when it's so windy and the boat is moving so much, we sometimes get seasick and it's not enjoyable and it's not practical. Um, so we're going to be doing the rest of this out on the hard. We also found a yard that's uh, willing to do the keel work mm -hmm. and the glass work, mm -hmm. which are the two projects that we can't really do ourselves. In a couple of days, we're going to be hauling Uma out yeah. to get that project started. Yeah. So but we have a bit more prep work to do before that happens. We've got to take all of our tools out. We've got to finish clearing everything out of here. Um, pull the last few bits off the boat so that she's ready to haul out and uh, actually start putting things back in, which yep. is exciting. So we've got boxes from the hardware store <laughs> that we're going to fill up with everything that's left inside the boat. And, then, and we're going to put it in storage. Yeah. Uh, Start since with they're that. doing the work, we don't need our tools on board anymore. No. So our tools are all coming off for now. They can use their own tools. <laughs> Keep yes. our tools for our projects. <laughs> all right, let's get to work. We have everything successfully stored in the back of the truck and now we are on our way to the storage unit so that we can put these away.
All right. Well, we just dropped the tools off of in storage, and while we were in storage, we also picked up our app board and our app board gas because we're going to be moving Uma. But as you guys may have noticed, we don't have any electronics on board, which means we don't have a working motor. Which means that if we're going to be moving the boat, we're going to we're going to need to tow it. So we're going to drop the dinghy and strap it to the side of Uma, like the good old days, and we're going to tow Uma to the yard. Uh, this is going to be interesting because uh, we don't have a mast, which means we don't have a halyard to grind the dinghy up with. So we're probably just going to flip it over and like chuck it in. I guess. <laughs> That's true, I didn't think of that. No. She's also like a little deflated. But we brought the pump, so we should be alright. She's she's so sad, look how flat she is. The last time we used this dinghy was when was the last time we used a dinghy? Like a year ago? Um We haven't used it since we anchored made it. in Menorca almost a year ago. Yeah. So like February of last year. Yeah. Oh, well, of this year, February 2023. That worked out like way better than we were expecting it to. <laughs> Should we take bets to see how many pulls it's going to take to start the motor? It's been oh. for a while, and I think I ran it dry when we put it away. I think, mm, I think it's just going to take, I think it's going to be two pulls. Two pulls? I think two pulls, and it's starting. What do you think? I think, I am pretty sure I ran it dry when we got here. So, like, I think it's going to take more than two. I'd be surprised if it was one. There's hmm. no way it's going to be one. Yeah, I think you never it's gonna know. take five. Five? Because we gotta prime it. It's been oh. sitting for like a year. Okay. There's no way. Alright, we'll see. Alright. I need a new one of these. It's kind of stiff. Come on! Breathe! Breathe! <laughs> breathe! Alright. Ready? Here we go. How did you say two? I, I said two. Five. So dirty, I said kiss it, but <laughs> it's not actually that dirty. This part is the back's all back up. You wanna you wanna come for a ride? Yeah. I'll put it, my lady. Ugh. Oh, it's nice. You remember, uh, you remember what it's like? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> it's a little colder than the last time we took the thing out, I think. <laughs> Why did it just die? That's nice. Did I unplug something? Weird. Just 
died. I don't want to have to do that tomorrow. That's why we're out running it today. Yeah. It's definitely got a bit of like an idle issue now though. Shit. I wonder if after like three years of running this, we finally should clean the carburetors. Yeah, it doesn't idle or shit. It might just have like some water or something in the fuel too. That fuel's also been sitting for like a year. I'm trying to do some engine testing without getting as wet as we did out <laughs> on the harbor. It was, it, it had uh, the little like plug at the end of the water pulling was uh, like clogged, I guess, but it's good now. That was easy fix. I was hoping it wasn't it like a cobweb in it. I was hoping it wasn't like something wrong with like the cooling pump. Glad I noticed that though. We could have like overheated the engine. It's still pretty warm. Make sure this motor's not going to screw up tomorrow while we're pushing our boat around and around all those crab pods and stuff. Well, that seemed to be quite successful. I'm glad we went out and did a little check and burned through all the cobwebs today. Um, but it seems to be running pretty good now, so I think we're ready for tomorrow morning. We're going to be up and out of here first thing in the morning. We're hauling out at like 9 a.m. Well, it is a frosty December morning this morning. You can see my breath. I don't know if you can see it on camera. But it is dead, dead calm. And we are ready to push Uma around the corner and haul out. And luckily, we're gonna get some help from some of our patrons who speak more Italian than we do. And just launched their boat a few days ago. And it's been on the hard for 22 years. Uh, so they're gonna help us get our boat on the hard not for 22 years. Whew, it's cold, I should have brought gloves. Ah, wasn't expecting it to be this cold this morning. But we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, we're just waiting for them to arrive and then we're gonna tow Uma around the corner and haul her out. Are you ready? Yes. We're gonna go so slow because the bottom of our boat is full with barnacles. Only we're gonna go faster because at least we have a clean prop. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's gonna be great. It's perfect because there's no wind and there's no boat next to us, so we're gonna so we're going to be able to turn very smoothly. And uh, we're just waiting for Martin to show up and he's gonna help us. Um, he's gonna mostly help us be our translator <laughs> because as we've learned, English isn't very spoken around. Here. How's your Italian? My Italian is not perfect. How would you say that in Italian? Il mio italiano no è perfetto. So, sounds good to me. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> we still need help. It's a beautiful day. I know. Yeah. It's like cold but sunny. Huh? Going? Nice good. water bottle. Where'd you get that from? That's fantastic. <laughs> so I think the plan is that we're going to put the dinghy in forward, slip the slime line off, and then slip the starboard like aft line, and the boat's going to start like drifting out into this nice big void beside us. And then we're gonna just like really slowly turn and try to get out of here. There's zero wind, so I think we're gonna be fine. <laughs> All right. Find out. Are we ready? Yeah, Are you ready? Definitely. <laughs> Always. Have you have you uh, towed a boat before? Never. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. 
All right, you ready? Let's do it. We're clear. All right. Yeah, just watch his back. Watch with the rope. Yeah, the rope, the slime line. Feels like the good old days. <laughs> Hopefully, it's the last time we have to uh, tow Luma with the dinghy. Because after this, we're going to have better batteries and longer range and all those fun things. How many times have we towed the boat with a dinghy? Oh, dozens over the years. Dozens we've towed the boat. But this is the good setup. We get the prop the same, like, parallel to where your normal prop is. You're good to go. We officially left the marina and now we are slowly making our way towards the yard. Although I feel like we're going faster than if we were motoring with the electric motor. <laughs> um, we only have one, one and a half miles to go. So it should be really quick, 15 minutes and we'll be there. And it's perfect because there's absolutely no wind this morning. Um, as soon as we get there, we're going to tie up and then they're going to haul Uma out and pressure wash the bottom of the boat because it's full of barnacle and then we'll start assessing what to do with the keel and we're going to talk about the interior of the boat as well because while we're gone they're going to potentially be doing the glass work that we need to do inside the boat so Den's at the outboard and Martin's on the helm Well, we just pulled into the slip. It was a successful docking mission. We only bumped just a little bit, but like we couldn't really go in reverse to stop. So we just kind of let the dock stop us. Uh, but now it looks like we're waiting for this giant crane to haul out this not so giant powerboat. And then hopefully they'll haul us out next. But oh, we're not. Oh, small crane. We're not going in the big one. That would be so silly. It was a little tiny boat, big giant crane. No. This isn't the one we're using. This, this is the one we're using. I think if they put us in that, the straps would be so far apart that our boat would probably just like fall over. All right, so uh, they're not gonna haul us out until after lunch. So we are gonna take the dinghy back to the marina where we're gonna be taking the dinghy out and putting it in storage because we're not gonna need a dinghy while it was on the hard. Um, and then come back for the haul out after lunch, after cramps it up. Franzo. Franzo. Good job. Bye, Uma. Be nice. We're going to try attempts to get up on a plane. Let's go. Let's go. Go, go, go. We got Of cleaning. Crash. Well, hey, oh, that docking job was much better. <laughs> I, think, I think we learned from the last Before, one. I should have just pulled <laughs> the line that would have gone as, uh, as, as well. All right. All righty. Um, right. Cool. So, what's the plan? Uh, the plan is we're going to put the dinghy on the roof rack of our truck and take it to the storage unit. So right before we were about to put the outboard into the truck, we realized that if we're going to be stored for some time, probably a good idea to rinse it with water. Um, luckily, we have more helping hands and we're just going to rinse everything out and then we're going to store everything and the thing is going to go on the roof and then everything's going to go to storage. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you. All right. They make that little suction awesome. cup thing that you're supposed to use. Yeah. Super. Anybody Thanks for your help. <laughs> Familiar? We just did this right here. Yeah. 
four people here. <laughs> How many people does it take for this tiny thingy? Oh, it fits so well. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we need to do this more often. <laughs> well, that worked out well. Thing is on the roof. Now, I'm glad we had help, but it was a relatively easy job. But now we're going to drive to storage and put this in our storage locker. But it fits perfectly on the roof of the truck. So perfectly that I almost want to keep it there and go on adventures. <laughs> we'll have to do that somewhere, maybe in the spring. But uh, for now, yeah. Only one last step to do before we haul out. I'm just gonna keep. Do you want to just ride up there? Yeah, I can. I can ride up there. Yeah. in the storage unit and so we are going to go back to the yard and haul Luma out. Last step of the day. So see that big crane right here taking the big lift taking that power boat out? I don't think you can see but the lift right next to it that's the one lifting our boat out. So, for comparison, <laughs> it's uh, very different in size. It's happening. It's nice that they made the wall just the right height so that our bow sprit like just goes over top of it, about like that much, you know? <laughs> if we had everything in the boat, it would have hit the bow sprit. She's officially out of the water. Mission successful. We made it. Yeah. Job done. <laughs> it's uh, well. Last time we hauled out was in Trumza to yeah. put the servo prop in. So it's been almost three years since we've hauled out. So and she's been sitting for almost a year. So she's a little fuzzy. She really is. She's, she's fuzzy. there's like a whole ecosystem <laughs> growing into our boat. The servo prop is full of barnacle. No wonder why we were going a little bit slower coming in here. Uh, do we remember <laughs> when we went to haul the mast out? We were yeah. like four kilowatts motoring at three knots or something. We can normally motor at like it's five. Crazy. So that, that, that's why. We have a whole little ecosystem growing on down there. Well, one thing we've already noticed that's really cool is that the dimples in the side of our hull that were right, right up here are pretty much completely gone, which means the hull's already settled back to where she was originally meant to be. So blasting that structure back in now is gonna make it super strong and we're not gonna have dimples again when we go back in the water. Well, we are back at the yard. 
and Uma is now on the stand, so we're going to check it out and see what we can do with that keel. Good news, the giant crack in the front of our boat when we hauled out last time uh, isn't there anymore because the glass work we did seems to be holding up just fine. So uh, that's the first good news. Uh, second good news is we talked to one of the contractors here and he was looking at this tiny little crack in our keel and he, it's, it's a very normal thing to have when you have pure lead on a fiberglass thing. I mean, there's always gonna be some movement there, but he was looking at that and he was looking at the inside of it um, and he doesn't seem to think it's a big deal at all, but there's a, a boat builder here as well that's gonna come down next week and have a look at it and just double check everything because if we don't have to take the keel off, that would save us a ton of money and a ton of headache. But if we do, it seems like there's enough expertise around here that they'll be able to get it done. Um, so we'll see. They're going to put together a quote and get back to us on what that's going to entail. And then we'll make a decision from there. But we've got tons of other work to do while we're on the hard. we got to strip all the bottom paint off and bring it down. The epoxy barrier coat we put on 10 years ago, we put on over top of um, gel coat so it didn't stick very well. And so that's some of that's kind of coming off in chunks. Um, so there's a good chance we're going to be taking all the bottom paint back off again down to gel coat and putting it all back on properly and doing a couple of little repairs and then painting the hull needs to happen while we're out. Um, there's tons of gel coat damage from years of banging into things that needs to be fixed. And then all the glass work inside needs to get done as well. And those are all projects that we might help with, but we're also going to get estimates on to see if they can get done while we're gone because we are leaving tomorrow for the BVI's for the sailing festival. Um, and we're also going to be visiting family while we're gone in Haiti because Kika hasn't been back to Haiti in five years. Yeah. Five years. Yeah. So we've got a lot of traveling to do over the next couple of months. And we're really hoping that some of these projects can get done on Umo while we're gone so that the momentum can keep going um, so that this doesn't turn into like a 10 year project <laughs> because we want to go sailing again. And um, this has been dragging on long enough. So Uma's safe and sound on the hard, and um, we're going to be leaving her there. So um, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>